Welcome to the vendor training course dealing with different damage types. In this course, I will discuss the different damage types you may come across at a property and the proper way to access and report on each. Let's begin. All damages require written documentation in the update, along with photos to support your findings. When reporting damages, you need to identify the damage type and source by thoroughly inspecting the interior and exterior of the property. Your inspection is to start on the roof, as this is the point from which the majority of water and mold damage stems. After inspecting the entire exterior, including the air conditioner unit and the property structure, move to the interior starting with the attic and working your way down. Once damages have been identified, use the allowable to make the necessary repairs. If there is no allowable or the repairs exceed the allowable, you will need to submit a detailed bid into Safeguard. Keep in mind you still need to prevent the damages from getting worse. Therefore, it is important to not only repair any and all damages discovered, but also to address the source of damage as well. There are multiple damage types that you may come across at a property, including structural, roof, mold, water, freeze, fire, mortgage or neglect, vandalism or theft, unfinished renovations, natural disaster, storm damage, and security deficiencies. Let's take a detailed look at each. When inspecting a property for damage, it is important to examine the structure. Look at the main dwelling and other structures, like garages and sheds. The following are potential damages you should be looking for. Foundation cracks, bricks needing repointing, sagging roof ridges, patio overhangs missing structural posts or columns, cracked or deteriorating interior headers over doorways, unstable floors, major cracks in drywall, and missing structural columns in the basement. Additionally, check the integrity of all staircases and make sure load-bearing beams are intact and in good condition. If damages are within your scope, provide a bid to repair. If they are out of your scope, provide an eyeball estimate to repair. When placing a bid, include the following information. Detailed description of the damage, location, and source of damage. Total linear or square feet affected. Number of man hours to fix the damage and additional equipment needed. To learn more about structural damages, watch the Assessing a Property Structural Damages course. Additionally, address any roof damage the property may have. You should inspect the roof from the exterior and interior for signs of past leaks and possible active leaks. It is imperative that you never leave a property with an active roof leak. To learn more about roof damage, watch the Assessing Damages to a Property's Roof course. You will also need to check the entire house for mold. Common areas that attract mold are basements, crawl spaces, utility closets, bathrooms, attics, under sink cabinets, and any other area near a water source. Make sure you identify what's causing the mold and then address per the client requirements. If both the source and the mold cannot be addressed for the allowable, a bid will need to be placed. When placing a bid, report how you plan to treat and clean the mold, as well as how you plan to remove it. For example, Giving a bid to treat and clean indicates that you will wash the affected area with a soap and water solution and then spray with bleach or antimicrobial solution. You also need to submit the following information. Total square feet of block walls, drywall, paneling, or other surface material to be treated and cleaned. A breakdown by each type of material and dimensions for each and total square feet of all other combined surfaces to be treated and cleaned, such as cupboards or baseboards. Sealing with kills may not be necessary on all surfaces, but if it is, you will need to provide the total square feet of block wall, drywall, paneling, or other surface material to be sealed with kills. You must also provide a bid to treat and clean the studs and to seal with kills if necessary. Provide total square feet of stud walls, as well as ceiling and floor joists, to be treated and cleaned. Also indicate if you will be applying kills and how many coats. Please provide in your bid a description that must be completed after the moldy drywall has been removed. When bidding to remove the mold, provide the following information. Total square feet of drywall, paneling or other surface to be removed, and total cubic yard of debris to result from removal. Make sure you also provide a bid to treat and clean the foundation, walls, studs, floor joists, and so on. Water damage commonly results in mold damage. You must therefore check the property thoroughly for signs of water damage. If found, submit a bid to address the source. If damages are within your scope, provide a bid. If out of scope, provide an eyeball estimate to repair. Another common issue you may come across is freeze damage. You'll want to check the domestic water system and the wet heat system for freeze damage. If damages are within your scope, provide a bid. If damages are out of scope, provide an eyeball estimate to repair. When placing a bid, 
include the following information. The material used in system, copper, PEX, or CPVC, the size of the supply lines, whether it be half an inch, three-fourths of an inch, or an inch, the number of man hours to repair, the location of the repair, the linear feet, and for sink repairs, provide the type of material used, plastic, porcelain, and so on, as well as if any additional plumbing work is necessary. When you come across fire damage at a property, you should identify and address it based on the client's requirements. Don't forget to check the attics and crawl spaces. This may require pulling back insulation to view the framework of the house. Check if the structural integrity has been compromised as well. Include the following information when placing a bid. A detailed description of the damage, the location, the total linear or square feet, the number of man hours needed to complete the repair, and any additional equipment required. Also check a property for natural disasters and storm damage. Natural disasters include major storms such as hurricanes, wildfires, and earthquakes, while storm damage encompasses thunderstorms, hailstorms, and windstorms. If damage is found from any of these natural occurrences, provide an eyeball estimate and bid to address the damage. Vendors must also identify mortgage or neglect during the initial visit. Mortgage or neglect would generally be described as anything cosmetic other than vandalism which will not worsen over time. Mortgage or neglect can only be reported during the initial visit. Damages found on subsequent visits should be reported as vandalism. You will look for holes in the drywall, broken doors, damaged flooring, and heavily stained floors to name a few. Include the following when placing a bid. A detailed description of the damage, the location, the total linear or square feet, the number of man hours to complete the repair, and any additional equipment needed. Any vandalism or theft discovered at a property needs to be identified and addressed per client requirements as well. Vandalism includes graffiti and broken walls, floors, doors, or windows. Keep in mind, holes in the wall or floor may be due to theft of copper pipes or wiring. It is important to identify this damage as theft if that is the case. When placing a bid for vandalism or theft, include the following. A detailed description of the damage, the location, the total linear or square feet, the number of man hours needed to complete the repair, and any additional equipment needed. Environmental hazards found at a property are also a serious issue. Generally, these circumstances require the EPA to come out to the property. Leaking oil drums, meth labs, and dead bodies all fall under this category. Call from site immediately if a situation like this exists at a property. Additionally, always address security deficiencies. Check for damages to the exterior doors, including sliders. Are any knob locks, deadbolts, padlocks, or slider locks broken or missing? Are any doors unlocked or broken? Are any windows broken or unlocked? Are there any holes in the exterior walls? Is there any improper boarding or any openings that aren't boarded and should be? Make sure you address any security deficiencies you find, as these can lead to mortgagee neglect. Another damage to look for, even though it does not affect conveyance, is unfinished renovations. Provide an eyeball estimate for renovations to be completed. Often when a property has unfinished renovations, safety hazards are present. These hazards must be reported and addressed. To learn more about what may be a safety hazard, watch the Identifying Safety Hazards course. As always, make sure you take photos throughout the entire property, regardless of whether damages are present. If there are damages, provide a photo of the damage before and after it is addressed. Also provide a photo of the source of the damage. It is imperative that you take preventative measures to ensure damages do not worsen prior to the repair. If a repair cannot be completed for the allowable, you will still need to take action to protect the property from further damage. I hope you found this course to be helpful. To learn more about how to deal with damages at a property, view our additional damage-related courses.